so much for joining us here at Harvest Online. Wherever you are watching and wherever you're watching from, thanks for making us a part of your day. If you could click that subscribe button, that'd be awesome. Hop on over to the other socials, Facebook and Instagram, like and subscribe and follow there. And uh, we would love for you to join us on all the socials. We exist so that all people may know Jesus and grow with him. We are going through the Psalms of Ascent. And so if this is your first time checking us out, we're in Psalm 130 today. You can go back and, and follow us all the way uh, back to uh, Psalm 120 right here on this page. We would love for you to check those out if you've missed a message. And today uh, we're going to be in Psalm 130. And here's the question. Have you ever experienced something personally uh, that you can't wait to share publicly? When Sarah and I got married, we went on a honeymoon. We went to Excellence Playa Mujeres um, over in Mexico, and it was such an amazing um, honeymoon. Just the, the whole place was great. Uh, the food was fantastic. The service was fantastic. Like every little detail was excellent. And we, and it was called excellent, so it should be, right? And um, and we just loved that resort so much. And so when we came back, we just wanted to tell everybody else that was getting married, hey, you should go to an excellence. You should go to this excellence. You should go. It, it's amazing, right? And so we had this amazing experience personally that we really wanted to share publicly. Well, and a lot of us do the same thing. A new restaurant in town. You go on a nice uh, dinner. You see, you go to a new restaurant. It's good. You enjoy the food. You enjoy the atmosphere. You enjoy the service. You come back. You can't wait to tell all your friends, "Hey, you should go to this restaurant. Right? It's so good." You know, the, uh, a resort, a new coffee place. Like you go and you're like, "I'm going to try this new coffee out." Oh, it's phenomenal. Now you want to tell everybody, right? A great experience you had with a service provider. Uh, maybe you had some cable hooked up or something like that. And you're like, "Man," or or you got a new cell phone service or something like that. And you say, "Hey, these people treated me really, really well." Well. We've all had these moments where we've experienced something personally that we want to tell everybody else about publicly. But the question is, how about mercy? Have we, have we thought about it from the per perspective of mercy? That the mercy we've experienced personally is something that we want to share publicly. Well, here's the thing. When we read this psalm, that's kind of what it's about. That the mercy experienced personally will surely be experienced publicly that the mercy that I experience because of the Lord is some mercy that you're, you have the capability of experiencing because of the Lord. The mercy that, that a group of people experience for the, the, for the mercy of the Lord is also something that a wider group of people can experience the mercy of the Lord. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to walk through Psalm 130, kind of break it down, and then kind of go from there. So here's what it says. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark my iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there's forgiveness that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope my soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, so here's where he broadens it, because I've experienced this. O Israel, hope in the Lord, because I can hope in the Lord. You hope in the Lord, right? For with the Lord, there is steadfast love, and with him there's plenty of redemption. So this theme of mercy again, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquity. So you see the psalmist here kind of make this personal and then apply it publicly. That this forgiveness, this mercy that God has poured out on him, right? That, that he hopes in, this mercy that he's experienced personally, is something that the nation of Israel will be able to experience publicly. And so he calls on Israel to hope in the Lord. And so he begins with a psalm uh, or a, a cry of desperation in verses 1 through 2. The, the psalmist is not crying out to the Lord from a good place. He's crying out from the depths. And from the depths, the psalmist is crying out, pleading for the, God, for the Lord, right, as he's crying to call out, uh, to shed tears, to declare publicly. That's what cry means. Pleading is urgent prayer, a call for mercy, an appeal. So the psalmist begins by asking the Lord to have his ears attentive to his situation, to his circumstance, right? And so he starts from that place to say, I'm crying out, I'm pleading out. Hear me, O Lord, my call for mercy. Then we hear, of God's gracious willingness to forgive in verses 3 through 4. In these two verses, the psalmist begins to recall what he knows is true about the Lord. That the Lord 
should count all of our faults and no one could stand if he did that. If God didn't show us mercy, no one would be able to stand before him. And the psalmist declares that instead of counting our faults, God offers forgiveness and therefore we should respect God all the more. Still, this theme of mercy. He says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. That's Matthew 9, 13, 12, 7, and Hosea 6, 6. And so here we see the heart of God that is filled with mercy. The psalmist then describes in verses 5 through 6 how he is waiting upon the Lord. This is descriptive and prescriptive, meaning that David is describing how he waits on the Lord and therefore encouraging those who read to wait on the Lord. Describing how the psalmist waited on the Lord and prescribing how we should do the same thing in verses 5 and 6, the idea of waiting on the Lord is written about three times. And so it's this patient longing. That's what the writer is describing for us. It's this patient longing. It's like I'm patiently longing for God to intercede on my behalf. I'm patiently longing for God to show me mercy. And the psalmist does not doubt that God is going to bring deliverance. He just knows that he needs to be patient, right? It's kind of like Christmas. I saw a thing the other day. It's like, uh, I don't know, a hundred and something days until Christmas. Now, some people think that this is totally crazy, that people count down Christmas like this, and that once July 4th is over, you might as well just start putting up your Christmas decorations because now we're in Christmas season. I'm kind of one of those people that's like, ah, July 4th's over. Let's just decorate for Christmas now. I know a lot of people are not. But there's a part of us that patiently longs and waits for Christmas. I don't even think it's about the presents or whatnot, but we just know there's something special about the celebration of Christmas. We know there's something special about celebrating the virgin birth, and it's something that we look forward to, uh, or most of us look forward to year-round. But we're patient. We're like, man, I'm patiently longing for Christmas to be here. That's kind of what David is like. He's like, I just patiently long for God to answer my prayer because I know because he's faithful that he's going to do it. And finally, in verses seven through eight, we hear a call for others to hope in God as well. The phrase turns from personal to public. The psalmist looks to the giver of mercy before the gift of mercy is given. And what the psalmist learned privately in waiting on God in his mercy is now that he applies it publicly as Israel waits on the Lord. And so there's kind of two or four verses, two sections, four verses that I just want to kind of end with here. And it says this is, You, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand. But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. In verses 7 and 8, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plenty of redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. This psalm is a gospel psalm. This is, it's one of the, uh, what they call a, a penitential psalms, easy for me to say. Meaning one of the seven Psalms where the author sees where his own sins have contributed to the problem he is facing. And it highlights the assurance of God's mercy and even when we are in the depths of a trial. Psalm 130 doesn't necessarily teach us a principle, but it teaches us a posture. It teaches us the posture that our hearts should have in the midst of waiting. The psalmist has learned something about God personally that in his waiting that now he is wanting to reassure Israel about the heart of God in their waiting. The psalm is the encouragement out of many uh, of the many out of the experience of one, meaning out of the experience of one that can encourage out the many. And so this is one of those psalms that talks about the gospel. It talks about the goodness of the gospel. It talks about the, the faithfulness of God. It talks about his mercy that he gives, right? That this is what the psalm is talking about. It really kind of gets to the mercy experienced personally will surely be experienced publicly. And we know that through the, the power of the gospel. And this is and this is the gospel right here is that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came down from the right hand of the Father, was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, 
And then he died on a cross and rose three days later so that anyone who would believe in him, anyone who um, would want to cross over into kind of that, that line of faith, all they would have to do is believe in him and say, Jesus, you're the son of God. Would you please come into my heart and save me from my sins? All they would have to do is that. And then they would have this experience of now knowing Jesus personally in this life and then forever in eternity. And that's a decision that you can make. And that's what the psalmist is saying. Is that you can cry out to God and seek His mercy and seek forgiveness, and He is faithful to save you. So if that's somebody here watching, I would just encourage you to, to say this prayer, just to say, hey, Lord, I, I, I just uh, repent of my sins, and I want to ask you to come into my heart and ask you to forgive me of my sins and ask you to be my Savior. And I want to be able to follow you all the days of my life. And I want to give my life over to you. Will you come and be my Lord and Savior? And I declare you as king. And we believe that all you have to do is say a prayer like that or something like that. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you'll be his son or his daughter. And that's really, really good news. Because that's what Psalm 130 is talking about. He's saying, listen, the experience, the mercy that has been experienced personally for me can be experienced for you. The, the mercy that's been experienced personally for so many can be experienced publicly for so many more. And that God is faithful to forgive us of our sins and He's faithful to extend mercy because that's out of His heart. So, the mercy experienced personally will be experienced publicly. God bless you.